Hello, welcome back to another Purpose and Pixie Dust podcast. My name is Lindsay Dollinger, and I am so excited for our guest today, Hannah Hermanson. Hannah is the CEO of the Feminine Marketing Boutique. And as a business coach for years, Hannah has gained deep insights and intuitive knowledge about what motivates people to take action. Hannah and her team of expert marketers combine these insights with personal branding strategies to scale coaching businesses so coaches can get back to their zone of genius. And she is the creator of the Feminine Marketing Funnel. And I listen to her podcast and I I love your show every single week. And it provides me a lot of insight because I feel like I personally tend to operate a lot from the masculine energy. So I've been really diving into myself, the feminine energy in my business the last couple of months, not a couple of months, couple of years, but Hannah, without anything else, welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. We are so excited to have you. Hi, I'm so excited to be here. And I totally relate to the defaulting to masculine and feminine being this new like frontier. There's so many of us who are starting to explore what it means and to tune back into things like our intuition. So I'm glad to be here. Yeah. Yeah. And I can't wait to dive into that because I have a gut feeling that there are a lot of listeners that are even like, okay, what does that mean? Feminine, masculine energy and all that. But before we dive into that, tell us a little bit more about you. I We were talking before we started recording about how we are in very different locations right now. I am in a sweater <laughs> and you are in sleeveless, which yes, makes me yes. really jealous. But tell, tell us a little bit about you and your journey into doing what you're doing with Dream Life Marketing. Yeah, well, I grew up in a small town in Wisconsin, so I know the delights of a snow day and I know how to shovel and chip ice (laughs) and do all of those things. My whole family is still there. I actually got a taste of snow this Thanksgiving when we went to visit. Um, But my journey out of the snow and into entrepreneurship (laughs) started with actually an opportunity to join an MLM. One of my okay. coworkers when I used to be a college advisor started Arbon, And at the mm. time I was like playing hooky from my day job and going to 10 a.m. yoga and putting things in my calendar like OBGYN, dentist, <laughs> like donut, you know, just like she, yeah, yeah. Okay, she happens to have her 10 a.m. sessions or whatever. Doctor's appointments regularly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And one of my friend's coworkers, Sarah, was cued into that. And she started doing Arbon. And I just saw all these opportunities to like bring my passion for yoga and protein powder and wellness into <laughs> a business. And that's when I started to learn entrepreneurship, like even just how to spell it. It was so foreign mm-hmm. to me. No one in my yeah. world had any sort of experience in creating something other than like a laundry mat. And so yeah. it led me on a path that ended me up in San Francisco, California and quitting my day job. Arbon helped me, you know, move a lot. And then when I realized I wanted to enhance my offerings and honestly, like kind of get rid of the middleman, I realized there was yeah. just so much more I could be offering my clients than just protein powder and skincare. I was seeing like, oh, this is like an inner transformation that women in MLMs or who consume these products, it's so much more than just, you know, the face cream. So that's when I became a certified life coach and I was doing more fitness instructing and honestly just trying to pay the bills in San Francisco at the time. But I did start getting high ticket coaching clients while my peers in my coaching school were really struggling. Like they didn't teach us this, how to get clients, but I had been sharing my story I had been telling my friends this journey that I was on. And even when I was selling products, I was always telling like that bigger transformation story and it resonated with people. So over the years, I helped enough other peers and coaches get clients. I was like, look, this is not the stuff they're teaching you in like bro marketing school. This is not what they're teaching you in like getclientsonline.com or whatever, you know, kind of like sales academies there are out there. But I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm sharing my story. I'm keeping people engaged in the conversation. This was like 2017. So Facebook groups were new and they were really working and you could actually foster community there. And so I built a six figure business online doing that. And then in 2020, shocking, everything changed. Yep. I was a little bit frustrated with the results that I, that my clients were getting. And I Mm. realized that coaches, I'm a black sheep. I'm even the black sheep in my family, right? I'm the black, I live in Mm -hmm. Mexico. I'm 
I'm the weirdo out there. <laughs> Most of my clients didn't have that natural marketing interest. Mm. And so that meant they weren't that good at it and they weren't doing it consistently. So in 2020, I started doing done for you marketing. Instead of teaching coaches how to do the marketing, I just said, hey, what if I do this for you so you can do what you want to do? Coach. And so by doing the marketing, are you doing, are you talking social media, website, a little bit of all of it, email? What does that look like? Yeah. So marketing is not a one size fits all game. So every client does have a personalized game plan based on first and foremost, their human design. Are you into it, Lindsay? Are you an HD? Oh my gosh, junkie? I'm so into it. Yeah. I'm a projector okay. actually. Oh. Ooh, okay. We have a yeah. few projector clients. Do you know your profile? Like the numbers? Three and one. Okay. Three and one. So you learn through life experience. That's your mm -hmm. three. And that's yeah. how you see yourself. You're always like, I don't know. I'm just like doing a podcast, doing things, like <laughs> learning as I go. Learning I'm as I go. Of... Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But your audience sees you as a one who's actually more of like a trusted investigator. They don't see you feeling like you don't know what you're doing. They see you as like, yeah, like Lindsay's the one like reporting from the field, telling us what it's like. She's such a trusted advisor. Yeah. So there I go down my human design. How we I, love human no, design I love it. No, I love it. I love it. I'm a 4-6 okay. manifesting generator. So the 4-6 means that I perceive myself as the opportunist. Like everyone can move to Mexico and make their dream life their real life. But my yeah. audience actually sees me as a six, which is a role model, which is like, good mm. for you, Hannah. We are watching from our couch and you are the one that can do all of that. And so there oh, is this cool. like strategic. That's like a discon yeah, there's a disconnect yes. there too. So figuring yes. that out. And this is why having marketing done for you is helpful because it is a mm. personalized approach and human design gives us some of that lens just in how to position you yes, on what platforms to be on. So like for me as a role model, LinkedIn has been really helpful. Podcasting has been really helpful because it's more of these professional sharing resources, people seeing me as that trusted role model. Yeah. But just kind of, you know, shooting the stuff here with you. If you're a one, I also think, you know, LinkedIn is going to be a good place for you, but also sharing more of those just like real time. I'm out here. I had this breakthrough. This is my mm. day. People are really going to love seeing that from you. So okay. all that is to That's say, awesome. yes, we do websites. Yes, we do LinkedIn. Yes, we do social media. It really depends on the human that's in front of us, how they're uniquely designed to exchange energy with the world. That's human design. And then also, yeah. what are you willing to do? Mm. There are so many other marketing agencies who are going to tell you, you got to post seven days a week and go live and like do all the stuff that makes you want to go to the dentist and take a nap for seven years and never do any of it. So we're <laughs> yeah. always looking for the thing that's actually going to feel good. That's actually an alignment mm -hmm. because marketing is a long-term relationship. It's not just yeah. about going viral. If you have an actual product that you want to sell for more than just a week, <laughs> yeah. it's yeah. about showing up consistently. So we always make sure that there's a lot of alignment in where we put people's marketing. So do you always find out your client's human design? Like, is that like a piece of your method? Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's so cool. My husband makes fun of that. me. He's like, if this was dating, you would be like that red flag girl who's like, okay, date one. I'm going to need your birth date information, location. <laughs> your weight. <Yeah. laughs> He's like, you are a big red flag. But there's, oh my enough gosh. People, there's enough raising consciousness that understands mm -hmm. there is so much more to the equation than logic. So much mm. more to the equation than just follow this routine or follow this script that worked for someone else. So yes, yeah. we can design with everyone. I love that. So I just had a new business idea. We're going to do a dating website based off of human design and it's going to be amazing. So let's talk about that later. Love it. Okay. So just out of curiosity, do you ever have clients who completely don't want to do social media? And if so, like what can their marketing look like? Cause I do hear that more and more from people that I talk to where they're like, man, I would do a business, but like, I don't want to either put myself out there and, or like, just really don't like social media. Girl, same. Okay. So yeah. the role model in me took an entire year off of social media as a marketing owner, like as having a business, as doing marketing, I just said, this just feels like a really big energy leak. So I left mm. for a year and this is where the feminine marketing show came in and we went really, we like doubled down on email marketing and mm. LinkedIn because those felt like things that I wanted to show up for. And 
as a copywriter and as someone who loves telling stories, those were really aligned for me. And yeah. we grew to multiple six figures without social media. So if your number one motivation is freedom and privacy, it's possible. I did it for a year. Okay. Okay. I'm also That's a manifesting it. generator and don't sit still for very long. So being at that multi six figure plateau inspired me, although it didn't feel very inspiring at first, but when I started <laughs> really examining the opportunity for us on social media, I did go back and we are back on social media, but it is a completely different relationship. It's not me. Like, what am I going to say today? And like, is my high school boyfriend going to see this? And like, am I going to get canceled? And it's not like from this place of just like, okay, I got to show up to show up. Or the strategy mm -hmm. that unfortunately a lot of new business owners take on, which is posting and praying. Okay, yeah. like, oh, it's this cool reel. I'm just going to put good music and like keep watching my own story over and over and over and think, hopefully someone else likes this. Yeah, You need a much bigger strategy, whether it is social media or podcasting or whatever you do. So that's my answer. You don't need it. You do need a bigger marketing strategy in place to see the sort of consistency, volume, and speed that most of us desire. Most of us don't desire to only do email marketing because there will be people who sit on your email list for three years, 10 years. Like literally, that is a very slow cycle. Again, if you're happy with that and this is something that you just want to be magical and you don't want to see growing consistently, there's so many ways you can position yourself but the position I'm in has us back on social and I'm having so much more fun with it than I did during the pandemic and when weird things were happening over there for me. So yeah. <laughs> what are some tips you have for someone listening? Who's like, okay, I'll give social a try, but I would like to make it more fun or make it feel some more aligned for me than like you said, like oh. methodically. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Methodically yeah. posting. It looks very different than like method and then methodical. I know. I'm Well, and I'm a Spanish teacher by day. So words oh. sometimes, <laughs> words sometimes in English do not always mesh for me, but yes. <laughs> Muy bien. Muy bien. Okay. Yes. So one of the biggest things to take a lot of pressure out of, of ourselves with social media is to make it like a habit, like part of your lifestyle, mm -hmm. right? Just like going to the gym. You don't go to the gym for one week and then say, whoo, I have the perfect body. I can do any sort of athletic thing that I ever want to do. No, you have to keep going every single week. Mm -hmm. And so many of us do think that social media is just like get one reel out or just like get this, like get this thing out for a launch or the short term thing. And so I had to also find how is a way to show up consistently, be inspired, that doesn't leave me feeling like I have a job. Like social media sometimes felt like yeah. a job. Like I have to do this 10 a.m. every day. So right. this is what's working for us and how I've really been able to set up the marketing side of our business for so much flow. Okay. So you go about your week, you go about your life, just like you're working with clients, doing sales calls, whatever. But you insert this little idea in the back of your head, which is every single week, I'm going to be listening for the theme or mm -hmm. I'm going to take note of a breakthrough. We all have these. And maybe sometimes you like celebrate at the end of the day, like, yay, this client finally realized that she has to eat carbs, whatever, right? The thing is that yeah. we work with a lot of health coaches. But if you actually set the time every single week to reflect and think back on I personally find like I'm repeating myself all the time. Like my clients are also just like niche and dreamy that it's like, everybody's asking me about how to document testimonials. Okay, great. Now I'm going to sit in front of a camera and tell people what I know about collecting testimonials mm -hmm. or what I know about carbs. And I will say I was resistant to this as well. So I understand if you want to run away and say, you don't want to listen to me anymore. But the truth is video is the way, right? Yeah. With yeah. AI, with attention spans, there's no shortage of distractions and content. Video really is the best way to get your energy and your message and your integrity into the eyes and hearts of real people. Yeah. So this is why I'm saying literally just sit down and talk to a camera. I do this every Friday. So, okay, mm -hmm. this is a the theme for the week. This is what I'm hearing. This is what I think people are thinking about. And I'll shoot like three reels. Okay. Now I have a team that edits those videos and helps them go out into the world. But if you don't have a team yet, then think about these weekly content topics 
Don't worry about having the perfect hook or using the copywriting like problem agitate solve. Just truly give value. In 2024, yeah. people are so smart when it comes to you trying to be salesy or you trying to tell them that you have some offer. Just truly show up as a thought leader. What do thought mm -hmm. leaders do? Tell you what they know. Give you a new perspective on something you've been worrying about. Answer the questions. Like, don't just save it for your clients. Like, actually answer the questions and give your value. Yeah. They're yeah. never good. A reel has never helped me lose 10 pounds. Okay. Don't feel like they're <laughs> going to go do it on their own. They're not. Yes. I was just <laughs> going to say that. Like, no more gatekeeping. Like, actually give the good stuff because people are going to want to work with you that way. Yes. And this is what makes you magnetic. And this is the feminine energy that we want you to be in. We want you to be flowing with your downloads and your divine brilliance and to be able to just be in the receptive mode. And that comes from having enough strategy behind you. And I'm telling you, the strategy is reflect once a week, document it, put it in video form. Okay. That's your strategy to just start connecting and being seen as that thought leader or that trusted expert. So that's kind of the like flow that. for weekly just yeah. social media content. We then put that on LinkedIn and we send it to the email list and put it on YouTube. Like it's that very easy be to next... be repurposing. Okay. A hundred percent. My next question. Yeah. It was just, then do you turn around and repurpose all that? I would think so just to save time and you know, why not? Right. Yeah. And with these platforms now becoming so much more video driven, sure. You might need a little bit different formatting of the video, or you might have to change your caption to not say DM me on YouTube. Right. But it is very easy to repurpose. And for the sake of just starting to get out there consistently, I would much rather see you doing it rather than doing it perfectly. Right. Awesome. Yeah. 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 No, perfect. So we repurpose that. So you mentioned, you know, the feminine marketing funnel. So mm -hmm. I want to give you the full thing because that's just the very first step. Okay. okay. So our that's feminine it. marketing funnel follows an acronym you're all going to love, which is CEOs. Okay. So C is the top of the funnel and that's connecting. And this is where that thought leadership video content is going to help people connect with you as a personal brand, as a human, as someone with the value that they want or they don't. Remember, you're not here for everyone. Mm, yes. Don't worry about your high school boyfriend. I've been there, but like, he's not watching. Okay. Yep. yep. It's not for him. Okay. So we're connecting, we're putting out video content, even if it's just three times a week, start there. This will make you magnetic. But if you don't have a following yet, also think about, I get this question a lot. Okay. Yeah. If I put video out and no one sees it, what do I do? Yeah. This is where you need to leverage the law of attraction and be the change you wish to see in the world and give what you wish to receive. Going back, mm -hmm. if your strategy is post and pray and you're sitting in your bathtub and you just watch your own story over and over and over <laughs> and you don't actually engage with the platform, you're not going to get engagement out of the platform. Yeah. So yeah. be a friend, reshare other people's reels, comment, engage, have real conversations. No matter what platform this is, I highly encourage you to find one where you can actually be having real conversations. It mm -hmm. was after eight years of running my business that I said, we have enough email subscribers and podcast listeners for me to just do this. So yeah, that's a great be point. Brave, be a friend, make connections. If you had a brick and mortar, you would be walking on the sidewalk, knocking on the doors, introducing yourself to the neighbors. Do yeah. the same on social. Mm. Love that. Oh, yes. Yeah. The box yeah, it's social. It's it social. You have to be social. Yeah. You have to be social on social media. Otherwise you're, you're trying to use it for something in a way that it's not meant to be. And you're not going to get success hundred percent. Yes. Yes. I love that. Totally. So we're connecting number one, sending our videos, engaging with people. Then the E of the funnel is engagement. So mm -hmm. even if you get all the likes in the world and you start getting followers, it really doesn't matter unless they want to take action on what you're talking about. So we want to get people to raise their hand and ask you for more information. Again, this is a feminine approach where we're not telling people, you have a problem, book a call so I can solve it. Or God, I literally used to have mentors that were like, put in the dagger and twist the knife, like make them feel their pain and like help them realize how bad things are. No, no. I come, play, come from a place of giving value. And then mm -hmm. people who want to opt in. We always have, and you guys go to my Instagram. You can watch exactly how we're doing this. Hannah Hermanson underscore. Okay. So then 
most of our content has some sort of call to action. Like if you want more information on this, drop a heart or reach out to me if you want the full video walkthrough of this solution. So okay. then we're sending longer form trainings. They're not webinars. They have to be shorter than webinars these days. They're not PDFs. Ain't nobody got time for that anymore. Like your lead magnets or like that piece of engagement should really be something that you feel like charging for. Like, oh, this is actually a training that I used to give my clients in 2018. And now, yeah, that's how valuable the sort of content needs to be. Okay. So I, you know, I'll have a video out there about shooting video content. I literally teach people this. Okay. And then I'll say, Hey, if you want to see exactly how I do this every single week, just let me know. And then I have like a 10 minute video that lives on YouTube that it's me sharing my screen saying, this is how I do it. We have a health coach mm. client who's literally like in the gym. Okay. This is how I do biceps today. Great. Okay. We engage the law of reciprocity. Again, a very feminine and a very distinct way to be marketing. Because when you answer someone's question or you show them to finally how to like work out that bicep or finally how to do video content in one hour per week, they feel indebted to you. And this mm -hmm. is what's going to set us apart. Like you said, no more gatekeeping, truly being that valuable person. I love that. Okay. But people also forget. They have the best intentions, but they forget. So you do need to be following up. And having some sort of system, whether it's just organizing your DMs or you guys, I have like old school pen and paper, <laughs> names and paper. of people, names of people who asked me for the video that I'm going to check in and say, hey, you know, did you get a chance to take a look at it? Did it make sense to you? Do you want to talk about doing this for you? And I'm really, I mean, I'm in the marketing space, so I can be really honest and like, do you want us to do this for you? Do you want to have a sales yeah. call and see if this is what's right for you? Right. So oh, yeah. there's this dance and like action brings so much clarity. Write mm. that down. Action brings clarity. Yeah. I meditate multiple times a day. That brings a different kind of clarity. Okay. So sometimes when I talk about feminine energy, everyone's like, yes, I just need to get a mud bath and eat cherries. <laughs> All the ideas will come to me. Yeah. Sometimes you need to like put on your big girl pants and go walk around and ask people like, did you watch the video? Get did you done. see my business? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. I totally agree. I love that. <laughs> so action will bring clarity. And so you'll find the sort of ways to message or engage or really any business comes down to how many people know about you and how many conversations are you having? Yeah. Yes. There's going to yeah. be, okay. I am into feng shui and all the magical woo woo stuff can bring you clients. But when we're talking about consistency and growth and speed, there's also the law of action in the law of attraction. Yeah. So the E is all about engaging, sending more valuable resources, asking people what they thought so that you can get to O, which is offering. Now, mm -hmm. some of our clients don't even do sales calls. I still do, honestly, because I want to know if I want to work with you or not. <laughs> we take, yeah. Yeah. We work with clients really closely in what we do. So offering, right? Do you want to hop on a call to talk about this? Are you interested in learning more about my programs? We need to be willing as women to be brave enough to let people know what we have. We forget this a lot, okay? So it's those three simple steps, connecting, engaging, offering, so that the S is sales, right? So that you can be advocating for people, enrolling them into the solutions that they need. Some of our clients do call the S solutions, right? Like giving them the thing that they actually oh, need but it's yeah. sales. <laughs> okay. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's sales. Yeah. I'm curious for the O, what do you say to your clients who are so afraid of that offering piece? Like, is there any sort of wisdom that you can give to the woman listening to this about well, the O? Well, even the offering needs to be valuable, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not just like everyone book a sales call with me because I'm so bored and I would just love to stress out about sales calls. No, yeah. it's like they're watching something relevant. And this is where writing things down or having some sort of tracking thing is like, we know they reached out to me because they wanted to know how I shoot content in less than one hour per week. So they have a problem. Like they're not doing that. So yeah. do you want me to help you with that? And if we like sales calls, I also know there's so many scripts out there. And like, I told you, I don't do that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's really yeah. about listening. It's mm -hmm. just like in most of us who are in coaches or the healing space, this is what we live for. Sales calls are like the most powerful transformational conversations that we can use all of our coaching skills in. Yeah. So I truly think about 
you, you're interested in this for a reason. You likely have a problem or a goal. You're watching me. Should we talk about how you can also do this? Because we all do know, and I don't know everyone's industry here, but like the women that I work with are smart and they've seen a lot and they've tried a lot. And so if I can just get on a call and show them even more of like how we do things, I'm telling you, Lindsay, it is screen share galore in my world. It is not like- <laughs> I do too. I do switch, that too. Right? Mm -hmm. Like bait and yep, switch sort yep. of stuff. So you got to feel good about, you know, I mean, this is a whole other podcast episode of just like being an in integrity and having the energy of sales on your side. But yeah. if you can even just think of it as listening at the beginning of your business, this, those conversations are the most rich market research calls, whether or not they close, you are going to learn so much about your ideal clients and you're going to have the opportunity to help even in sales calls. So if you're feeling nervous and you haven't built those sales muscles, maybe just call it market research calls to get yourself into that action that will bring you the clarity and confidence. Yeah, I love that. And you're so right. You learn so much from them, even if you don't get a sale out of it. And not only about your clients, but yourself too. Like, ooh, I, you know, or or this is in alignment for me, or I don't like the way I said that or worded that. Because I know for me, I have been on a lot of sales calls myself as the potential client that I have walked away from and felt really icky. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that is something that I never want to do to someone as a coach. And so I just kind of have naturally strayed away from them. And so I don't call them sales calls. I just call them connection calls. I'm like, let's just connect and we'll see, you know, the best way if I can work with you, if I can help you, if not, you know, yeah. I'll, I'll help you the best way I can, but yeah, and the good thing about the CEO's funnel is that these clients are very educated. They've already like raised their hand and said, yeah, I'm like interested in learning more about this topic. They've watched at least one, if not 20 minutes of videos from you. We also do yeah. email marketing and DMs and all these other things. So like make sure that they're falling in love. There's a theory in marketing, which I think is a law. And the formula of 7114. People need seven touch points, 11 hours and four places to consume your content. This is why podcasting is great for that 11 hour number. So mm -hmm. consumers are smart. And most people, yeah. like we don't wanna like bait and switch and like trick them into a sales call. That's what I'm saying, like law of reciprocity is that they're already starting to feel like, I do wanna know more from her. I mm -hmm. am curious what she has to offer. So yeah. this educational funnel means that your sales calls do feel much more like enrolling. Like you're saying, like, let's connect and see if this is the right fit for both of us. And that's exactly the energy that this funnel and put positioning yourself in the right way and making sure your messaging is on point, aligned with your human design, it helps make that S, a whole, the O and the S a whole lot easier. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That makes so much sense. Okay. So when people work with you and your agency, do you work together essentially to like create this as a funnel or like, what does that look like? If someone's like, okay, I'm interested in learning more on how I could continue working with Hannah, like what sort of ways can they work with you? Yeah. Yeah. So most people that come in need like the initial build. And so this is where we actually build the SOPs, the infrastructure. We give you the team members to come in and actually make sure that you have a system. Because I've also worked with agencies who they'll like give you software, but then when you're done working with them, you don't have anything. Yeah. So when we were building the offer, I was very clear that like we are coming into your business and building this for you. So you don't rely on us. So there yeah. is an initial build of at systems, SOP, technology, things that you're just going to need in place to make sure that you are getting those videos out and you are capturing emails and you are tracking those conversations that you're having. So we yeah. make sure that you have that installed. And then we get to, and that's like the masculine structure that so mm -hmm. many coaches are missing. Yeah. So many coaches are missing that masculine structure of like, I know I have something that I can plug in, rinse and repeat. It's going to go every single week, even if I'm menstruating and don't feel like doing anything. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. we build that so that then you start to pour in your feminine brilliance. And this is where we start asking you to book those flow sessions, which are when you document your breakthroughs. And most of our clients just brain dump in a Google document. Then they send mm -hmm. it to our creative team and we start outlining their content calendar. So we for, we have documents and Trello boards and you know, whole communication system within yeah. our agency so that clients are now seeing, okay, these are the videos that I need to shoot. 
we give them, we do give them good hooks and we do give yeah. them good marketing language to say, Hey, this yeah, is yeah. your breakthrough on carbs. Here's how you teach your audience because they don't mm -hmm. actually believe you yet. So like, let's make sure they get <laughs> it in from that's the way. Not, like, yeah. Yeah. We mm -hmm. meet them where they're at. And that's based on the human design research that we do, the market research that we do, the branding deep dive we do with clients. So then when we're in our weekly flow, clients send us their insights. Okay. This is what we, this is what I did this week. And then we give them videos to shoot, emails to send. We've got amazing copywriters on our team who make sure that they are in alignment with the content that's being created. They sit yeah. down, clients sit down, talk to the camera. Then they send our video editing team those videos. So that team polishes them up. I'm also like, I'm a client of this. And I'm just like, God, the video editors just keep getting better and better. Like they're just <laughs> You're like, nice job, like, nice job. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing what like some captions and some stock photos mm -hmm. can do to make reels so much more engaging. Yeah. So we've got the video editors and then we've got a team of people who actually post and make sure that that content is mm -hmm. going out to social media. Those emails are getting scheduled in the right way. How many of us have done the like, hello, first name and like <laughs> sent three emails in a day. Yeah. Like we make sure you're not in the tech of it. Clients yeah. are truly just showing up, documenting their breakthroughs and talking to the camera so that we mm -hmm. can create this sort of omnipresence quickly yeah. for them. Yeah. Then that. my team also manages the engagement. So we give them team members who will be tracking their social media and their emails and whoever replies or says, yeah, I want more information. We're tracking and making sure those conversations are getting the right resources. And then we have folks who are also just like appointment setting which is something a lot of other agencies do, but it's not all we do. We make sure there's so much more educational content so that we can be having DM, email, back and forth conversations to get sales calls booked on our calendars. So our clients are showing up, shooting video and showing up for sales calls. Nice, nice, that's nice. That takes a lot of that thought process out and it makes it really, really easy for, for anyone well, who's like, okay, what's going on right now? And I was that girl many years ago too. It's like, okay, what's going on? Especially with all the things that have been changing and how video has become more and more. Mm -hmm. Like I literally, Lindsay, I sat for six months and I kept writing down, I don't want to do this. As an ideal client, I, okay, well, we're going to need video editors then. I don't want to do this. Okay, we're going to need yep. VAs then to post that out mm -hmm. because it is yeah. a big undertaking to be consistent. I know yeah. you can sit there and put pictures of your dog together and make a reel in 45 minutes but I know right. you're not going to do that every single day consistently. So yeah. I had to find the rinse and repeat thing that kept me in my zone of genius. And now I'm just committed to giving that to all these other people who I know have the same problems that I did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I love that. And I love how you just said that too, because a lot of times I find people are like, well, who's my ideal client and who am I mm -hmm. talking to? And you're like, it's that person who it's you. <laughs> you're your ideal client like a month ago or two months ago or a year ago, two years ago. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So much good. And I also love that you were a network marketer too. I didn't realize that when you started yeah. sharing your arm on story, I was like, Oh my gosh, that's so similar to my story. So I have good. been on a mission for freedom and dream life. And I just, it keeps evolving so much because yeah. I am a manifesting generator. So I'm in it and I'm like, I have 17 ideas at once, but yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, I totally get that vision part of mine too. I love it. All right, Hannah, tell us all the places that we can connect with you and where can we go to find out more information about working with you? Yeah. Okay. So dreamlifeisreallife.com is a great website to start at. And then on Instagram, I'm Hannah Hermanson underscore. And there's only two H's in that whole thing. I'm Hannah always forward. I'm not a palindrome. So hopefully okay. that helps you find me on the yeah. ground too. Yes. And I'll make sure to link everything as well. And if you're watching this on video, it is already linked for you. And then I just have a couple questions. I like to ask my guests. These are just for fun. What is your latest or favorite personal development book that you've ever read? Right now I'm in the I, favorite. Oh my gosh. I'm just gonna tell you what I'm doing right now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Right now I'm reading the art of uncertainty, Ooh, which is just, I haven't heard yeah. of that one. Yeah. Okay. It's big for me as a okay. type A recovering type A. Uh, yep, trusting yep. the universe more and more every day. So the art of uncertainty. And then I have to share like my favorite money mindset abundance book. Oh, you might okay. be familiar with it. Rich AF by Amanda yeah. Francis. Yeah. yeah. I've read it like four times, done all the homework. And every single time I have a money breakthrough. So Ooh, okay. run, okay. don't walk. 
Okay. All right. Well, I'll link both of those. <laughs> yeah. You you heard her. Go get them. Okay. Do you have a morning routine, a nightly routine, neither or both? Oh my gosh. Lindsay, I'm like the girl who needs 11 hours of alone time and then I'm ready for the day. So I have big okay, okay. morning and evening routines. Do you want to know like all of it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you want to share, sure. Okay. All right. So I wake up and I immediately hit my yoga mat. This is like a thing in my thirties. I just don't, like, okay. do people actually not stretch? Like, I don't know. I have to stretch first thing in the morning. I have an yeah. app that I usually do the same like 20 minute real hamstring release. Okay. Oh, and oh, then okay. I get back in bed, but I make the bed and I do a meditation. I've really been liking the Chani app. It's an astrology I've app. Heard of it. Okay. Oh, okay. C-H-A-N-I. And okay. it's very... It has a lot of great things, yeah. but okay. it has like the daily astrology and it gives you kind of like a good intention or like journal prompt. And then there's a guided meditation. So I'll do that. And then I'll journal just what I got out of my meditation. Or sometimes I'll script my day, just how abundant or how spacious I want my day to go. And then okay. I'm reading A Course in Miracles. So I read a page of A Course in Miracles. Again, I'm just doing everything I can in the morning to get in my body and mm -hmm. get out ahead of the energy of the day. So yeah. this means connecting to intuition through meditation, connecting to a higher power right now that's reading Course in Miracles. Mm -hmm. And then I come down and make coffee and usually go to the gym or whatever. But that's yeah. my like whew, supercharge intuition, law of attraction, me time in the morning. I love that. Oh, I love that. Okay. Yeah. Evening. Are you going to go into evening? Yes. Evening. Okay. okay. And this is great because I have a dog. The best kind of accountability okay. for an evening routine, by the way, mm, is having a yeah. dog. Um, and then and morning really, routine because mine gets me up every morning at 5.15. <laughs> mine gets my husband up every morning so I can uh, get up and do my morning routine. Ah, <laughs> uh, lucky, lucky. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We make a good team. So yeah. in the evening, we all do a family walk. And my husband and I have this practice that it's, it's someone else's. And so many of the things that we know in personal development came from so many other people ahead yeah. of us. So I think it's something like the five minute jur bullet gratitude journal. I don't know. Okay. I, my friend shared it with me. She had the journal. She made it like a verbal thing with her husband. So now my mm -hmm. husband and I back and forth, three gratitudes. What are you grateful for today? Three gratitudes. Then mm -hmm. three proud ofs. What are you proud of? What did you accomplish? Three of those things. Then if you could start today over, what would you do differently? And I really resisted that because I'm like, oh, it's forward, yeah. be positive. Everything is working out for me. Oh, but there's really good insights in that question. Like yeah. boundaries I would have set, different routes to Costco I would have taken, moving my body more, eating lunch earlier, not mm. saying certain things to certain teeth, whatever. Like it's really, yeah. if you could start today over, is there anything you would do differently? Okay. Okay. And now I'm thinking that how I would answer that question myself right now. So interesting. Okay. I hadn't heard that one. I had heard the gratitudes, but I had heard some different questions. I can't think of what they were off the top of my head now, but I love that. I love that. So good. Play with it. Have fun. Yeah, I will. Yeah. And I love that you have that on your walks too with your dog in the evening. Like it's just a natural part of your routine. So good. Yeah. And then last question is what is your dream vacation destination? Mm, Greece. I have not, have not been to Greece and okay. I just feel like I, I, I want to wear all their clothes and that's like the Mediterranean diet is my favorite kind of food. And I just mm. want to be on those white and blue streets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And lots of good pictures for all your content you're going to be making too. I, I mean, I feel like you should just go book it. <laughs> get it yeah, okay. But here's the thing. I'm not going to be out there talking about how to, I literally sit right here in the office, get my videos done. That's for my that's like, true. I'll send those that's pictures. Your to my yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right, Hannah. Well, thank you so much. I loved our conversation and I know everyone else did as well. And everyone, please make sure to um, connect with Hannah, tag her since she is back on the socials and check out everything she has to offer.